yesterday, hundreds of pro-Palestinian protesters took to central London's Oxford Street, Regent Street and Carnaby Street. The yeah. demonstrators were calling for Christmas shoppers to boycott against so-called pro-Israel brands. Mm. Well, I mean, we were actually shopping, mm. weren't we, yesterday on that street, classic, leaving it to the last minute. We've got to go <laughs> back again today. But I'm quite glad that we missed this. Fashion giant Zara was among their targets as well, forcing security guards to block two stores. Protesters chanted, Zara, Zara, you can't hide. Stop supporting genocide. Yes, police say there were no arrests, mm. though. Yeah, well, look, we're going to talk about the Christmas messages from politicians. Uh, we're going to go through some of your emails as well. But I can't help but wonder whether or not this should have been allowed, really, in the run-up to Christmas. We've got all the Christmas lights there. Why was this allowed by the Met Police and Co? Well, here to discuss this is political commentator Dr John Coulter. Dr John, thank you very much. Uh, Merry Christmas Eve, first <laughs> and foremost. I hope you're well. Hello, folks, and a happy Christmas to all at GB News. Oh. Thank you, thank you. <laughs> well, well, look, so um, shall we just start, I think, with um, what we're expecting to see in terms of these rallies that have taken place, right? Should that have been allowed, do you think, in the run-up to Christmas, busiest shopping day of the year, everyone's out with their family trying to get a little bit of last-minute shopping, getting in the Christmas mood, and you've got all that going on? Yeah, well, one of the great attributes of Western democracy is the freedom to protest. But when does the freedom to protest become sheer intimidation of shoppers and traders. And I think the protesters and the organisers of such rallies at this time of year uh, need to ask themselves, is there the danger that their pro protest, no matter what the issue, could be hijacked by militants? Coming from Northern Ireland, I know only too well how protests can eventually turn violent. Because let's not forget that one of the protagonists in this Middle Eastern conflict is Hamas, a known terrorist organization that butchers people, that massacres people. Now, from that point of view, is there the danger that the crowd could be infiltrated by openly Hamas supporters and turn our streets mm -hmm. into basically a bit of a bloodbath and a fight with the police? You've got to ask, what is the motivation for doing this? Mm. Yes, John, the, uh, the Met Police have, have sort of downplayed the disruption in a few statements they put out since yesterday. But I want to also ask you about these Christmas messages that we're going to receive from our political leaders. We've got one coming up very soon from Rishi Sunak, of course. The Prime Minister, Keir Starmer, will also uh, give us one. And also uh, Humza Yusuf, uh, Ed, who Davey. Else? Ed Davey as well. Yes. Richard Tice, who we're going to have on the show, will also deliver one. How important are these Christmas messages? Well, I suppose if we take a look specifically now uh, and you scrape away all the lovely nativity rhetoric that's in them, basically what these are from the three leaders that you've mentioned there, these are basically rallying calls for unity within their parties uh, with an election coming up. Essentially, in terms of what we know already about the Christmas messages, they have fired the starting gun for the next Westminster election. Let's be honest about that. Sunak, Stammer and Hamza all face internal problems in their parties. This is a way of calming the troops before the big storm of the election protest. Yes, I fully appreciate the need to remember our troops uh, and all the service personnel, the emergency workers, all the people who will be working over Christmas. That's relative. But to start to use your Christmas message uh, as a rallying call uh, for a general election is pushing the boat out a wee mm. bit too far. I'm quite looking forward, John, to playing politician bingo <laughs> as we get these Christmas <laughs> messages in throughout the course of the day. We're definitely going to have something about Christian values yep. in one of them. We're definitely going to have uh, something about the military in, in another one. You can see that coming. Um, there'll probably be something about, you know, what a wonderful, diverse, multi-faith nation we are uh, as well. I mean, you know, I I'm quite excited to see who does what here with these. But, you know, it is a good one, isn't it, I think, for politicians. We're seeing <clears throat> Keir Starmer on our screen there uh, right now to try to, try to show that they are potential future leaders, aren't they? Yes, th this is really, as I say, a rallying call, not just to the internal uh, workings of their parties, but the, in the voters themselves. Uh, basically, if we were to summarise each of their speeches, it really is what they have left out, and the, they are the words, 
dear Santa, please ensure that I get keys to power in the next election. That's the line they've left out. <laughs> so it's a bit of a, a Christmas wish list almost. Absolutely. Well, it is 100%. And we are, just to reiterate as well, we're going to be playing you clips of these as and when they come into us. So make sure you stay tuned here at GB News. But, John, I can't help but notice you are you're in Northern Ireland, OK? So what's, what's Christmas going to be like at the Coulter household and what's it like in Northern Ireland? Well, it's absolutely lashing rain here at the minute. <laughs> uh, I've, just moved, I've just moved to the north coast, uh, so I'm going to try uh, and go on the beach. Uh, I have relatives here in New Zealand, and they always like to taunt us uh, with lovely pictures of them taking their turkey on the beach uh, on Christmas Day. So uh, I've uh, earmarked out a lovely beach, Castle Rock Beach, here uh, on the north coast. And I don't care if it's rain, hail, snow, the <laughs> end of the world, whatever it is, I'm going on that beach. Now, I'm not going wild swimming, but uh, mm -hmm. I do have a, a tradition. Uh, since uh, my wife and I got married 34 years ago, we always host Christmas dinner. And there is the celebration, the commemoration of the eating of the first Brussels sprout. <laughs> and it is my Excellent. Fantastic. Excellent stuff. I eat the first Brussels sprout, and that signals the start of the Christmas dinner. I think Brilliant. you should go wild swimming. Go on, go for it. Thank you very much for your time, Dr John Calder, political commentator in oh. Northern Ireland. Lovely.